Buongiorno everyone, we got another Mini GT, and it's actually a duplicate casting of the orange one I have, but I like airplanes, I have a small playlist about 1-400 scale airplanes, and I thought, you know, what the heck, I'm going to get another casting, at least this one's got some lights on it. So, Mini GT number 193 is the 2020 Follow Me car, the Lamborghini Huracan Evo at the Bologna Airport, where the factory of Lamborghini is. I've actually been to Bologna, but I went to the Ducati factory tour instead. Not the factory, the Ducati Museum. Uh, I don't know if the Lamborghini, Lamborghini was open at the time, or I just didn't have enough time. So, we're going to take a gamble here. I have this model color green by Vallejo painted that because it belonged on the front front caliper but sometimes these brakes don't even fit every mini GT so we'll find out if we can add some 3d printed brakes to these things all right it's typical uh, licensing uh, TSM model is a real company they're not a fly-by-night operation and that's why they have hundreds of uh, models and they do I have airplanes actually also not just cars and this packaging is, is pretty nice because it's small you can actually you know collect the packaging if or if you can't display all your models you know this blister protects it on all sides and uh, let's get this out of the way now so I've talked about the Huracan several times I have several different castings if you want to search the channel but just a quick refresher here from Motor Trend. This is a 5.2 liter, uh, 630 horsepower, all wheel drive, V10, uh, 7 speed twin clutch, automatic transmission. Uh, let's see, 0 to 60 miles per hour is 2.5 seconds. Uh, braking 60 to 0 is like 93 feet. That's pretty good. Anything under 100 is pretty good. Uh, lateral acceleration 1.12 G's so pretty impressive and I guess that's all I really care about all right so you could have paused and figured out if it looks like those photographs I bought this locally my dealer actually told me this is an error car can you find the error I'm gonna give you one second welcome it's, instead of like welcome to Bologna, welcome to Italy, it's more like well, come to Bologna, well, come to Italy, you know. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Mini GT goes back and redoes this, so you know, with the proper English. Uh, so I guess uh, you know this stuff is made in China, I believe. There you go. So English is not their primary language. These things happen. All right, so let's get into these wheels here. Yeah, they uh, do look not like those photographs, actually. These are not remotely close to the photograph. Uh, the photographs seem to have like kind of more, more of like a snowflake pattern, whereas these are not. And let's take a look at the reason why. Here's that orange one I was speaking about. So it's the same casting as this early Arancio orange uh, version. So they, they're just reusing their molds, you know, they're trying to hide it with the black. Probably not worthwhile for them to make a new mold just for these wheels, although those wheels on those photographs are pretty sweet, much cooler than these. Alright, uh, so we got uh, all this graphic work is tampo printed, there's no decals, which, uh, you know, is pretty horrible in my opinion. It's a shame that other brands, more expensive brands, Inno, Tarmac, they like to use decals. The reason why I like tampos is this actually paint, so it's not going to scratch off easily, it's not going to wrinkle or anything like that. Here we have a white colored, uh, I'm not sure if that's a turn signal or just a reflector, but it is white on the photograph. Mini GT is usual, I think, yeah, we have a rubbery mirror so you can drop it. You don't want it, all, but it'll survive, you know, a drop most likely. And they also have a recess here, so if you want to take a silver sh uh, pen, you could add some silver in there, or even a paintbrush and just wipe it off with your fingers to get the extra off of the edges. Alright, so shallow windows, pretty horrible distortion because they're molded. The door handle here, uh, obviously a 
not all the white was able to get in there, so that's too bad. Here's, uh, I'm going to guess, the fuel filler. Now let's go around to the front here. So it's, well, it's black, so it's really hard to see the details. It looks like it's glossy. Let's see if we can see if there's anything in those vents. Now it seems like it's pretty much smooth in here. Smooth in here. This has like a little sensor or maybe a... I'm guessing that's a sensor or maybe the cover for a tow hook. This is all blanked off but no texture. So that's... I don't know if the real car has no screens there. Here, what's got... Now this I... Th no, that's smooth as well but there's two little dots there for some reason. Not sure what... Oh, I see. So there's some streaks here. Okay. From the front, they look like dots, of course. So really hard to see what's going on in those vents, but they're vents, so it's no big deal. So we got the badge here, and you got the outline of the bull. Not much of a text outline, of course. But the text up here is nicely printed, you know, pretty crisp. I am not even going to try. All right, let's try it. Repartiamo Pila Forti. <laughs> That's a long word. You try to say that the first time. Okay. Yeah, the airport in Bologna. Oh, but now under this magnification, what is this? Grime or something? Or is that a... Is that touch-up paint? Look at this. I don't know if this was messed up at the factory and they actually went and touched it up with some paint. But that that's definitely not nice. Yeah, that's that's pretty bad. So I was wondering if Mini GT's quality is gonna go downhill because they put out so many castings and every month they put out like ten new models, right? Or maybe even more. I think they are going downhill. My uh Bugatti Cento GH has a horrible exhaust tip, you might want to look at that video. And this is not cool either. That's not cool. Not typical of earlier Mini GTs. Alright, so there's a black interior. We'll get to that later. I'm going to open this thing up. So we have the follow me light here. It's nice, thick, red, translucent. Very good. This side, no major problems, it seems. This little vent here is part of the casting. There's a streak in there. It's a little contaminant there. Alright, from the outside, we got some. I'm not sure if these are vents. Yeah, actually the rear photograph so it shows these as vents. They're just kind of ridges here. The blackout printing's alright. Follow me looks nicely printed. There's a recess here, probably a vent on the real car. Looks like some molded details as well. Okay, and then a little black here. Not sure what that would be. I don't have a top photo. This checkerboard pattern is pretty nicely printed. I don't see any major problems with the printing there. Going to the back, now we do have some pattern patterning in the grills. These like hexagonal uh, dimples. And then we have Lamborghini printed there. Try to focus, that's, that is focused. So I guess that's not the most legible text. But the license plate is nice, you know, something there and you can actually read it. The silver around the exhaust tips looks pretty good and there's some depth to the middle, so that's pretty realistic. The tail lights, they actually are translucent red. I think there's black printing on the around them though. Yeah, it's not I don't think it's just red. I think there's black on there as well. Okay. And then we have some uh molded details here, a bunch of dimples and I'm not sure why those would be there, but even this little thing, not sure what it is. Alright. This is supposed to be glass I think on the real car but it's just painted black here. Oh maybe there's a third third brake light usually in this little section here. Okay. Bottom. Uh more often than not Mini GT doesn't care to tell you what the model is. So other than on the packaging. And then look again, this is pretty bad. That's a horrible paint blemish. Alright. But it is nice it's screwed together. Uh oh. I thought I recall now, maybe I can't take this apart. Let's we'll see what happens, because I think the screw is probably underneath that back panel. Yeah, so... Uh, let's 
it's a risky endeavor. It doesn't seem to want to come off very freely. This is plastic right here. This is metal. And then we're back to metal here. So the glossy black is the metal, and this is like just raw plastic, it seems. But I don't know if uh, what kind of glue is holding this in place. Uh, I think I actually got the pick in under there. But it doesn't want, seem to want to give. So I'm afraid the, the glue on this one might be rigid. I think on our other ones it's like a soft silicone type of glue. But this one, or maybe, I don't know, there might be pins going in that way instead of vertically. I'm not sure. Well, that's too bad. But I guess... I'm looking at the photographs, the thing has a, the real car has a black interior, so I guess there's no reason for me to repaint this interior anyways. Well, let me get the good old flashlight then and see if we can look through those distorted windows. Yeah, we can see a little bit here. Getting through one pane of glass isn't too bad. So, good old steering wheel there, center console, seats have some uh, grooves in them. Seat backs, yeah, molded details. So typical, nicely molded details, just black, you know. But it seems to be accurate to the real car. This engine is kind of flat, but at least it's got silver paint on the, uh, the engine. So not too bad for the price of a Mini GT. Now the dilemma is, if I can't take it apart, how am I going to easily get those wheels off? and try to see if those brakes will fit. So I've done this in other videos, so you might want to fast forward again, but I got some tools that I use to pry off wheels without taking the vehicle apart. And those tools are a bunch of old keys that I took to a bench grinder and I ground down to become chamfered and then I took a hand file and these are supposed to go around the axle. So I'm going to take this thing, if there's slack, which there is, I'm going to jam it inside this little gap, and then I'm going to lever the wheel off. Yeah, no problem. So this one has a bunch of uh, fluted uh, flutes to grab the wheels, not knurled or just plain slick. So that's the rear one. We might as well just see if the brakes will fit this one. Alright, so it seems like you got the green caliper on the front wheels, so let's see if this fits this, uh, it fits it quite loose. My 3D printed brakes, I just found the average of uh, the wheels of in my Mini GT collection. So in this case, I'm going to have to add some glue to keep that thing from messing around, you know, working loose. And So I have this little bottle thing that I just put some school glue in. Doesn't have to be super strong glue. I mean, it's not like this thing is gonna. It's not like an RC car, right? It just has to sit there. All right, so that one's in. Let's find the other green one. Yeah, lost focus again. Quite gappy. That gap. You can even see the light through it, but. I think from the outside it won't matter. Yeah, you're never gonna know. Well, I guess you know now that if you watch this video. But a stranger wouldn't know. Alright, so the rear one, yeah, we seem to have enough of a gap. And that helps ensure good rollability, which Mini GT seems to try to make all their models do roll well. And they also have, you know, decent looking treads as well, so I like that about the brand. This gap is not as pronounced as the front, but I think I can still pry this off. And so, very often, the axle might be too long, and that's why I made two of these keys. So now that I have that space opened up, I'll go and actually lever another one in there. Yeah, so that's what's going on. So, you might want to grab some old keys and keep, you know, make some tools of your own. Okay, so the rear should have red calipers, and yeah, 
that's just as loose. This is actually the loosest set of uh, brake to wheel fit I've ever seen on Mini GTs. I never bothered putting in, I don't think I put in brakes on that orange Huracan that I showed earlier because of the, that reason where I couldn't take it apart. But now that I have these tools made, maybe I should go and do that another time. Alright, so now putting this back, of course. Uh, I don't know why, but if you want to look at that, it just looks like a square hole, really. Yeah, there's not much else to it. Let's see if... Uh, okay. Now the real car has carbon ceramic brakes but uh, I usually just paint all my brake rotors silver because to paint them a dark color well you wouldn't really see them very much on, on the model then right but there it's kind of quite obvious that you have a brake system in there even though it's not quite it's not as realistic obviously So the nice thing about these flute axles, you know, they just push on and pull off straight. You don't have to twist it. If they're knurled, you'd have to kind of twist it to loosen it off. Okay, so, yeah, that Vallejo Green, it's not a perfect match, but I, I think it's alright. Uh, I'm not going to go buy paint to match this color perfectly, so it's good enough. And then obviously they're going to spin with the uh, wheels. So since I, you know, did it with this other one, I tried to use the key on this one, but uh, this wheel was pushed on so much, you see the key scratched the base. So I suggest you also invest in a pair of sharp uh, pointed uh, tweezers. If this gap, look how tight that gap is, but this is long and thin, so you might be able to get it in there next around the axle, but between the plastic right so let's see if I can do that here just get started yeah I did so now I created a much bigger gap and then I'll come in with the, that key and it should hopefully not tear into that paint so much yeah okay so you see I think that's a better way to go yeah I was just trying to jam that in there originally and it clearly messed it up so just a little pointer for you learn from my mistakes let me come back after I put some brakes on it seems like the 2019 Evo just has black calipers on a ceramic rotor so you can barely tell the car even has brakes so can you even tell that thing has brakes they are silver so that helps but yeah brake calipers I don't know I'm not sure why Lamborghini would do that. I wonder if customers actually prefer to not see brakes. I find that odd on a performance car, but anyways. Uh, let's see what other Huracans we have. So I've got this green one here of an earlier Huracan. My notes are saying it's 2014 to 19, and this is by Kyosho, the LP610-4. So another great model. In fact, if you look at this Kyosho, look at the detail of this door handle compared to that. I feel like the Kyosho is crisper in its printing. The only downfall with Kyosho is these are rigid mirrors. You drop this and that mirror is broken for sure. Uh, and also the panel gaps on this early Huracan is quite huge. Those are huge panel gaps. They're like Hot Wheels panel gaps. But look at the gaps here on this Kyosho. They're just tighter. So, anyways, they're both great models, though. You can't, I can't fault anyone for buying either brand. Well, here's another Kyosho. This one is the LP620-2 Super Trofeo. I guess I should start adding brakes to those Kyoshos one day if I get bored, but... And the last one, who oh, is this orange guy? We have this Mini GT with this crazy metallic green. It's really cool. It's an Liberty work, uh, 
Liberty Walk uh, version, so it's got the wide body over fendering stuff. And uh, I think I painted these wheels. They're like photo shift green and silver wheels, I think. Or they're definitely green. And uh, But the interior is not painted, so again, yeah, even this one has this plastic cover, so I just never repainted any of these interiors. I'm curious about this Kyosho. I should repaint. Well, maybe I didn't repaint this because it's actually like a race car. Okay. Sorry for all the zooming in and out, losing focus. I'm using a mobile phone. You can't expect the best in video quality from a mid-range mobile phone. Uh, not that the top view would change that much. Uh, they're all hurricanes, but yeah, I guess you can see, you know, the wide bodying and. I think this is the coolest green for sure, but this is probably the coolest paint job, although it would have been cooler if this is metallic green, because the real photograph is using metallic green. So that's a really odd thing if you think about it. This is a metallic green Mini GT, but this is not using metallic green. Maybe they thought this is just too hot rod like. Mm. But let's go back to the photograph here. You can, if you look really close. Let me focus on the front photograph. That looks like it's a metallic green to me. Or even in the side photo, just a sheen of it right here on the fender makes me think that's a metallic green. What do you guys think? This clearly is not. And also, it just... I don't know. It doesn't look like those photographs. Granted, the camera, this monitor, maybe they're not the real green. But, uh... This image looks fairly realistic to me. I don't like the sky, the grass out there looks pretty normal, the yellow. So, I don't know. And also, if you look at this, these lights are kind of orange. Yeah, but no, I guess I'm wrong because this is a real photograph and those are red. This one, they're kind of orange again. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe EG may have gotten it right. If you look at this, it's red, right? So we know that's red. This is orange. If you look at this green, maybe it is a lighter green than this photograph here. I'm dwelling on something I can't change. Sorry, I go off on tangents. Uh, but it's, this time around, it's a nice model, kind of, sort of. If grammatical errors bother you, you want to avoid this one because the welcome is misspelled twice and then yeah I feel like this the quality control of Mini GT is starting to slip the those paint blemishes they're not on those other two Mini GTs I have they're just not there Mini GT prior to this year I almost had no defects in my Mini GT collection uh, this orange one I showed earlier no defects uh, so, I'm starting to see more defects from this brand. I hope that they hear some people's critiquing. You know, it doesn't have to be me. It's improbable they would watch my videos. But, if you guys are on forums and stuff like that, maybe you want to comment on the forums. Maybe they check those things out. I don't have time to read forums or, or spend time there. So, anyways, thank you for watching. And, as the Italians say, buon volo. Supposedly, that's have a good flight.